Hello, and welcome to another uh, Lighthouse podcast. Uh, my name is Jeff Glenn, and welcome. Uh, let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer here. So, Father God, we thank you so much for the, for this time that we have to, to to dig into your word a little bit and, and to, to get some encouragement and, and some instruction and, and when needed, uh, some correction. So uh, we, we expect to meet you here today, Lord, in your word, in Jesus' name. So last couple of weeks, uh, we've um, hopefully been encouraged um, in talking a little bit topically about what it looks like to live as a Christian. You know, last week we talked um, and learned that we're citizens of the kingdom of heaven, and hopefully that was encouraging to you as it was to me. Um, you know, we learned that we have a, an inheritance with Jesus by virtue of our faith in him. So we, we are co-heirs with him in, in this kingdom, and our heavenly citizenship necessarily means that uh, here on, on, on the earth, in this life, that, that we're just traveling, we're just passing through. Um, you know, almost like we're, like we talked last week, you know, it's almost like we're sitting, you know, in the airport waiting for our connecting flight to go on to our final destination. And so not to stretch that illustration too far, but we do, we, we, we do have citizenship in heaven. We, we don't have dual citizenship and nor should we try to achieve that. You know, we know the Bible tells us that we can't serve two masters. And so, um, this world, um, doesn't and it cannot provide for us the things that ultimately await us in heaven where we will be truly uh, satisfied and we will be truly provided for. And so if we try to hold on to that or find that here, we are going to become dissatisfied and disillusioned and, and, and all the rest of those things that we, that we come to when we realize that uh, this world does not satisfy us. But we have hope in our heavenly citizenship, and that's what brings us joy and hope um, and so, as I said before, this kind of will end our topical, at least for now, kind of look at the Christian life. You know, I think we're going to pivot to the to the letter of Philippians. You know, this is where we got the idea of our heavenly citizenship was in Paul's letter to the Philippians. And so, as I was reading through that, I was like, this is so rich. I just want to want to explore this letter here um, as Paul writes to them. And so, he's encouraging them. Um, as he does in most of his letters, he's writing to encourage them, uh, to instruct them, and, and where needed um, to correct them. And so the Philippians, the, book, the letter to the Philippians has a, a bit of, above all of it. And so we'll, we'll pick it up. Um, in the beginning, we, we see that Paul always begins his letter you know, with a greeting where he imparts grace and peace to, to the listeners. And so, and I love that because, you know, it's, we all could use um, that spoken over us um, as well. And so as we, you know, consider the people in our lives who are believers, you know, to speak the same over them. And so Paul continues in verses three through six, and we'll, we'll read there where he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making request for you with all joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so to me, what's notable here is that while we may think of Paul as, as some great um, or impressive church father to be catered to um, as he toured throughout the churches that he either planted or was visiting, um, he didn't see it this way for himself at all. In fact, he, he continues, you know, this letter here, opening in Thanksgiving for this uh, group of believers and uh, to telling them as he's thinking about ways that he can bless them and praying for them is where he gets his joy and he's petitioning God on their behalf for their needs. And so this is Paul really modeling the servant leadership for, for us as, as he saw his calling to preach the gospel and nurture the believers that he had um, come to know. And so at this point, as he's writing, it's been about 10 years since Paul first visited uh, the city of, Phil of Philippi. And so um, he was eager to encourage this growing church as he was all of the churches that he, that he knew about. And so um, his first visit is recorded in the book of Acts in chapter 16. I would encourage you to read that. It's, it's really informative because the, the city that Paul entered then, it really wasn't unlike any of the other cities in, in his day that were outside of Israel. 
you know, we remember that, that Paul's ministry was mainly to the Gentiles. And so when Paul would arrive in a city, he would go to the uh, to the to the Jews that he could find there first, mainly in the synagogue, um, and he would preach to them until um, he kind of wore out his welcome, and then he would seek out and preach the gospel to the Gentile inhabitants. Um, but according to Acts, at least we see that kind of evidence that there was no synagogue because Paul had to go down to the river where he found uh, receptive people who were spiritual that received the gospel. Among them was a, a lady named Lydia who had become an important uh, figure in the early church, uh, supporting Paul during his time there. And so um, what's also notable about Philippi is this city had, had, a, had a rich history um, dating back 400 years prior um, to Christ or so. It started out as kind of just a little pagan um, settlement, really. And by about the year 1357 BC is when it officially got its name of, of Philippi. And it was named after the father of Alexander the Great, who was Philip of Macedon. And Macedon was was in Greece. And um, it was led by Philip. And he, he responded to a call from this little village or town um, that was under attack. Um, and Philip, uh, who was no doubt motivated by altruism um, and, and not the local gold mines for sure, uh, but he responded and, and saved uh, this town and he later uh, renamed it after himself. And so this was right at the beginning of the expanse of the Greek Empire and Philip's son, Alexander the Great, I think the Great was his middle name, but um, that's neither here nor there. Um, anyway, Alex would he would take this empire building next level. He would conquer most of the of the known world at that time. You know, southern Europe, uh, almost the entirety of the Middle East. You know, Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, north or sorry, south to Egypt, and then that whole western part of Africa there. And so he, you know, Alexander the Great, at least in his day, um, was great in that he conquered most of these areas with his with his uh, armies. And so here we have this this town, which we now call Philippi, that started as a small settlement, which was really kind of pagan, um, random religion, and it was saved um, at the beginning of the Hellenistic period by Philip. And the, the Hellenistic period was really just this expanse of the Greek culture, each of these places that they conquered. So they would um, superimpose um, their culture over the culture that was existing. They would even import um, people um, from Greece to kind of help support this process so that it would become more more Greek and more Hellenistic in its nature. And then over the next couple hundred years, um, after the death of Alexander the Great, um, the decline of the Greek Empire and the rise of the Roman Empire, in which the Romans did essentially the same thing. Romans came in, started to impose... Um, their culture and their religion and their way of life um, on these people. And so we had all these different layers. And so uh, we have these multiple competing cultures and worldviews uh, that are kind of brewing in Philippi. And so here we have Paul who's, who feels called to go there. And so rather than shy away from that or, or kind of leave this city to its own devices with all this competing, brewing, false religion, worldview stuff, um, Paul chose to engage that culture. And the reason is, is, I think, what should encourage us today is because Paul was persuaded, as we see in his writing, that the gospel of Jesus Christ is superior to all of that um, cultural brew that was existing and exists in our day too. But So he wasn't content to just let people that he never met continue in their kind of oblivious um, state, you know, trying to navigate between you know, this pagan roots and, and Hellenism and Romanism and, and whether, whatever other isms that were kind of going on there. But no, Paul felt called to, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so to be pointed, Paul did not point, uh, Paul did not buy into this relativism trap where we can, we can be told or led to believe that, well, kind of all roads lead to God. Whatever you do to worship, you can worship God however you want to, and he's going to honor that. And nope, Paul wasn't having any of that. He, he knew the gospel of Jesus Christ to be uh, superior. And so he understood that there's a very real and eternal difference between the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and any other ism or system 
that might want to be imposed upon us. You know, he, he sacrificed his reputation, um, his health and his wealth, and um, his home as he traveled, um, his freedom. He sacrificed that for the sake of the gospel. So he was convinced in himself that this, this gospel of Jesus Christ is superior. And so, you know, for us, you know, we shouldn't be surprised either. We live in the same kind of multi-layered um, ism upon ism, um, cultural thought on cultural thought, you do you, let me be me, me kind of uh, mindset. And just as Paul wasn't having any of it, neither should we. You know, we know that too many choices can lead to confusion and uh, maybe even some kind of inability uh, to, to make a decision. Um, but be assured from God's word that the gospel is superior, that Jesus is the truth, the life, and the way. And so we'll explore more of Paul's letter to the Philippines, to the church in Philippi next week. So be blessed and have a great week. Thank you.